Hi there, welcome back to my lab in Bangalore, India. My name is Ram and in this video I am going to tell you something about a drop-in replacement I developed for the U400 hybrid IC found in the Tektronix 2400 series oscilloscopes. The U400 is actually a channel switch and uh, it's actually a hybrid IC with a metal casing, a heat sink inside which the chip is sealed as you can see. The replacement that I built looks a bit like this and for comparison I just put both of them on the palm of my hand and you can see that it's a fairly small PCB with components on both sides, uh, uses a couple of high speed op amps and this will just drop into the slot originally occupied by the U400 and we'll see how it performs. So what you see here is the bottom view of the 2465A oscilloscope. This has a specified bandwidth of 350 megahertz. This is the U400 and what you see here is my replacement for the U800 which has been selling on ebay.com for a while. The U400 is held in place by four, four nuts and to remove it you just have to loosen the nuts and out it comes. You can see that there are contacts on both sides, a total of 26 contacts and they make, they, they, they make connections with these contacts here on the edge of the uh, socket. The replacement here has gold plated contacts on the ends, that's the bottom side of the board with the op amps and this is the top side, yeah it's focused, this is the top side of the board and what you do is to just drop this into the slot where it is then held in place by this little frame or bracket, uh, this could be made of either wood or uh, acrylic, I haven't quite decided which will work better in the long run. This just goes into place and can then be held down by the same four nuts again. So let's get started with looking at uh, the signals with the original U400 in place. This is a signal from uh, the oscilloscope calibrator output which is uh, 400 millivolts peak to peak starting at a time division of 2 milliseconds and we basically see how it behaves as you decrease the time interval. The calibrator output the frequency also increases to maintain the same period and you can see how it retains fairly decent square wave shape till we hit about 500 nanoseconds and then it goes a bit out of shape. On channel 2 I have a, a fast square wave with a rise time of less than 50 picoseconds. This is a commercially available product and we are now looking at a signal with a 20 nanosecond per division sweep and as you go down to 5 nanoseconds this is the way it looks. And we will see how it looks with the RU400 in place. We now begin the exploration of the RU400's performance. Again, uh, with the calibrator and a 2 millisecond uh, sweep, we can see that the waveform is pretty accurate, the readout is clear. And let's now decrease the sweep as before. You can, you can see that the readout remains clear, uh, the waveform remains square and fairly accurate. And as we hit This is one microsecond. And as we go down to 500 and then 200 nanoseconds, the waveform loses shape 
just as it did, it did with the original U400. Let's switch to channel 2 where I have the, the fast square wave. Again, the amplitude is fairly consistent with the original U400. And as I decrease the sweep division, the waveform shape is pretty much the same as what you got with the original U400. The rear out remains clear. Not bad. We'll now do a bandwidth check. Uh, with the original U400 in place, uh, I've set my 8640 signal generator to output <clears throat> a sine wave at 10 megahertz, and we've adjusted the amplitude so that it covers exactly eight divisions on the oscilloscope. Now, as I increase the frequency, the amplitude will drop. That's partly because my 8640 output drops and partly because of the cable effects. So this is not an absolute amplitude test, it's more of a relative one. We just want to make sure that the RU400 amplitude more or less matches what we get with the original U400. Uh, no matter what the latter might be. <clears throat> I go up to 100 megahertz and you can see that the amplitude is now approximately Six point six divisions at two hundred megahertz. It's down to about three, four, five, six, six point one maybe. Now we'll set the amplitude. We'll go bump up the frequency to about three hundred megahertz, and we'll see what the amplitude looks like. That's 300 megahertz and the amplitude is again about 6.2 divisions. How does this compare with, uh, how does the RU400 compare with this performance? Let's take a look. So now let's do the amplitude check, the relative amplitude check that is, with the RU400 in place. Again, I have set the signal generator to 10 megahertz. Uh, and set it to cover, set the amplitude to cover exactly 8 divisions. Let's bump up the frequency to 100 megahertz and you'll see now that we span about nearly 7 divisions. 6.9 more like it. Bump it up to 200 megahertz and we are at 5.8 yep that's 5.8 divisions finally we will change the frequency to 300 megahertz and see where it goes that's 300 megahertz do a little re-triggering yep at 300 megahertz we are at Again, at about 5.8 divisions. Not bad. Let's take a look at the shape of the sine wave itself. That's at 5 nanoseconds. And if I press the X10, it's fairly clean. Let's finally take a quick look at all of the four channels. So I've got the calibrator output connected to channels 1 through 4. I'll take you through each of them in turn. This is channel 1. Let's make the amplitude 100 millivolts. Then we have channel 2 at 100 millivolts. Here comes channel 3. Oops, it's a bit of... Ah, that's it. And we'll center the trace a little bit. And so you can see that the amplitudes are all very consistent. And 
finally this channel 4 here we go so in all of them the amplitudes are very consistent finally we will do a channel add of 1 and 2 and that should give you a trace that is twice as high which it does so basically if you turn it down to 200 millivolts you will see that it spans once again four divisions as it should be so that brings me to the end of my demonstration uh, the drop-in replacement board as well as the uh, supporting frame that I talked about uh, are, are shortly going to be made available on uh, the famous website. Uh, I invite you to take a look at it and if you like it, please do place an order. Thanks so much for watching.